quantum fluctuation messes with the Planck scale, which then triggers the Deutsch proposition. Can we agree on that? In layman's terms, it means it's time once again for the Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek, pop, culture, drenched in absurdity, and coated with sarcasm. Every friggin' week, we bring on an industry guest, or in this case, three, uh, to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I am your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me on this special episode is my co-host, Mike Kipfis. Oh, we will laugh and we will cry. Right. Uh, and also on this episode, we are talking with MCU expert, this is going to be your new title, Will Conway. <laughs> it's what's a symbol. Right, it's a symbol. Nice! Uh, and the offshoot comic guys, uh, yeah, David yeah. Clark and Cedric. Hey guys, welcome on? to the show. Um, so yeah, as you can tell, we are, oh, I didn't change the damn guest info again, Mike. I'm such an idiot. Uh, we're talking yep. to, we're going to be talking about uh, in-game. So we're going we're gonna to do an in-game wrap-up. Let me change this text real quick so, so as not to confuse people. Um, and so, you know, in-game was this powerhouse uh, endeavor, um, the, you know, the, the end of an, of, sort of end of an era, I think. Um, yeah. And, and the beginning of a new one. But although although I have heard that the 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 directors the producers rather the producers consider Spider Man Far From Home the actual wrap up, that's yeah. what I have heard. It's the end okay. of the, uh, Phase Three. Phase Three, yeah. It actually ends. I think with I'm Spider-Man. still just going to consider Endgame the end of Phase Three. I'm not going to lie. I like, it's going to explain some stuff from Endgame, but come on, like you don't you don't follow up Endgame with anything for a phase. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jake Libby says end of Marvel. <laughs> I think the reason why it, uh, why they're using it as the end because they're using this to introduce the multiverse. So this yes, is going to yeah. open up to everything. Well, yeah. well, spoilers. If if Mysterio is in line, which we know he's the chronic liar anyway. Yeah. I, I hope not because he said six one six, and I I want to believe it. I want to believe it like nothing else, man. <laughs> yeah, I hope he's good this time. It it would also be a, if if the multiverse is. Uh, Actually, a thing that would be the easiest way to bring in the X Men and the Fantastic Four. Because, like, how else do you introduce mutants into an established world for ten years? Yeah, yeah. But I, I will say this b- before we go one step further. Spoiler alert! I mean, like this whole fucking thing. Spoiler. If you haven't seen Endgame yet, turn it off. Just go away. Um, no, that's because you're. You should. You you need to find out what it is. You should have found out and watched it by now. And if you haven't, then just learn it from here. We will. And if you have, watch it again. Yeah, yeah. So I I've seen it twice. Mike, you've seen it two and twice. a half times. Two, two and a half times. <laughs> Wait a minute! Don't, don't reveal, Will. Uh, All right. <laughs> <laughs> Cedric, how many times have you seen it? Twice. I've seen it twice. Okay. And um, David. I saw it twice, not to brag. The first time was at Disney Studios. Not a big nice. deal. No big deal. Yeah, I, I, I can't top that one. Well, okay, no, sorry. No, whatever. <laughs> so, so and, and when was that? When did you see it? Uh, a week before everyone else did. Oh, cool. nice. <laughs> wow. I feel privileged. The, the perks are right, working so, at Bay. <laughs> so, there's, so there's there's quantity, right? But Or there's quality, but then there's quantity. Will, how many times have you seen the goddamn thing? I have seen it. Four times, and I've already planned to go see it the fifth time with another friend on Thursday. <laughs> all right, awesome, well awesome. That's all. Okay, so let's let's get into it. Let let's just open up with um, let's open up with, with just just your overall feeling of of this movie. Um, you know, how did it, how did you how did it resonate with you? And you know, like, did you love it? Uh, was it was it a good ending? Um, I mean, did they wrap it up properly? Uh, and, and I'm going to go first because I'm the camera's already on me. Um, I I I saw I saw it and I was blown away the first time I saw it. And I'll admit there might have been a few <coughs> like bits of dust in the air, maybe here and there. Um, and you know there were there was a few things I'm kind of like what about? But uh, all in all. Overall impression, fucking thumbs up, big time. Oh yeah. All right, oh, so yeah. Will, what, Will, what did, what, did, what did you think? Uh, first, second, third, fourth time, maybe I don't know. And has it has <laughs> I, it changed? I, I, yeah, I freaking love this movie. Uh, I mean, it might not 
there there are some flaws with it. Like it might not be technically the best movie of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but I find that like I can't even really rank this movie among the other Marvel movies because I love it for so many different reasons than the other ones. Like the other ones approach it like, hey, here's a good movie that we want to make, and they approach this movie with, hey, we just want to make a fan service movie for the fans who have been around for ten years. Like it really is just a giant love letter to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the fans as a whole. Like, I joked around with it on my last Facebook update, and I just called it fan service and movie. And then, like, it really is, man. If you've been a fan, you feel so rewarded for watching this thing. Right. Right. And uh, I, so I actually, you, you talked about getting bits of dust in your eyes. I didn't cry the first time I watched it, probably because I was just, like, my heart was just hammering the entire time. I couldn't believe I was actually watching this movie. Um, but I, I will, no shame, I cried the second, third, fourth time I watched it. Right. Wow. Right. You hey, knew so what just... happened, right? Yeah, I, that, just, that even might be part of it. Like the entire time of the second time watching, I was just like, "Oh, oh, Tony, Tony!" Like the Tony. first time they go up to. We already said spoilers. So the first time he goes up to his daughter's room at the beginning of the movie, and she says, "I love you, 3000. Uh, oh, yeah. that hits you, man. When you know mm-hmm. what's coming, that hits you. Right. Yeah. yeah. Hey, right. just real quick, we got some we got some chat in the in the chat room, and I, and I don't want to miss a whole lot of this because there's there's a couple in here that are really good. Uh, one of them was. Uh, Jay Libby, he he seems to think that Stark gave his life so Black Widow could live. We'll get back to that. We're going to come back to that. Uh, I don't think so, but we'll come back to that. And then he mentioned that he thinks that Stark might have been a scroll, which is a way to save him, but I don't think that's true either. Um, and then my wife says it was so good. My husband, my husband is an ass. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right. Anyway, anyway, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, uh, so Mike, what did you think? Uh, I here's how I would put it because it's interesting that I listened to Will and say you know that was it the best or not and and I kind of uh, it, it is hard to say what which was better but I will say this like when you tie your shoe right and it takes a lot of different um, uh, ways that you need to put the strings and, and make the loops and put it around, and then, and then you get a tie. But Endgame was like the, the double knot, and you couldn't have had the double knot and had your shoe stay so tight and feel so good on your foot without all the other processes. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Uh, maybe, sure. <laughs> <You're saying laughs> yeah. 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 Oh Total sense. <laughs> Just smile and nod. Yeah. <laughs> Does it make sense or not? Uh, all right, hey, so, uh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, David, one. David, what do you, uh, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> so, uh, I, I thought this, like, from the very first time I saw it, I think Endgame is the greatest, is the single greatest cinematic achievement in human history so far. Uh, I will because agree with that wholeheartedly. Yes, because and I, I have a bunch of friends who are movie buffs, and I said, no matter what your favorite is, it is lesser than this because <laughs> nothing else has ever done this. Yeah. Nothing else has ever come this close to anything yeah. like this. If ten years ago, if you had said this would happen, no one would have believed you. Right. Uh, or we would I have said it, it's going to suck. There's no way they can pull it off. Yeah, yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah. But sixty uh, characters in one movie, no way. Right. right. The, the it had only one flaw to me. Only one flaw. I am a huge Hulk fan. And after that five piece combo he got from Thanos in Infinity War, I think Hulk should have got at least one hit in on Thanos. Oh, yeah. You know, that's something I hadn't realized until the second time I watched it. I'm watching, I'm like, wait a minute. Where's where's the Thanos Hulk rematch? Right. Like, yeah. Hulk needs yeah. to get some beat down. But yeah. I don't know. He's a kinder, gentler Hulk now, so maybe not. Yeah. Who knows? Yes, sir. The worst version of Hulk. No, it's comedy relief. <laughs> He's comedy relief Hulk. Yeah. I, I wanted World Breaker Hulk. No. To, yeah. to get yeah. those hands. We've seen that in Ragnarok. It already not, happened. Not enough. Yeah. I need that constantly. <laughs> My favorite parts of Hulk have always been like the, the juxtaposition between the Hulk personality and the Bruce Banner personality, though. So when like they could like they just basically threw out the half of that dynamic. And the, so like, right. I totally get where you're coming from with that. Yeah, but other than that, though, it was great. It was great. Yeah. So while we're on Hulk, I'll hit one of my one of my bullet points was which was, did anyone want to see more of a payoff um, about sort of uh, how Hulk went from, you know, scaredy? Well, he went from you know like basically scaredy Hulk into Professor Hulk, or was that okay? Everyone was okay with just yeah, it happened. Five I was years good. Later. No, I was good. Yeah. I was good with that. 
Yeah, uh, I mean, I yeah, they, they had to cover everything in the five years. I, yeah. I think that was fine. Yeah. But to clarify, yeah. they didn't say Hulk was scared. They said Hulk Correct. was tired of being used as a weapon. Yeah. 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 Yep. Right. So, yeah. I, I was mostly okay with the painting. All right. I, that's <laughs> my dude. <laughs> I, I, I was mostly okay with it. I wouldn't have uh, I, like if they threw it in a couple more lines. I mean, they they did have that thing with him and Ant Man where he explained how he became Hulk. Uh, I wouldn't have minded a few more lines like in movie explaining why what happened with Infinity War, why that happened. But uh, again, like as a three hour and two minute movie, they they can't explain every little detail. Right. And and they, shout uh, out shout out to another uh uh. Offshoot comic, uh, Walter Bryant, Black Superman, is in the house, in the chat room, and he's saying that... Uh, Walter? Uh, he's saying that uh, Professor Hawk was uh, a smart fighter, but still a fighter, So, and I have to agree with that. He was. He, yeah. he just didn't lay hands on Thanos. <laughs> he, got the, he got the snap in, though. He got the he snap, snap in there, so, yeah. He was yeah. still... So I, I want to say, you know, one of the things about the Hulk, um, which which pertains to all the characters, was that... You know, they they did something with this movie that they did with Watchmen in that they created archetypes of characters, which is awesome. I always love when movies do that. These were all survivors. These were all people suffering PTSD, right? Or PSTD, P, P, post-traumatic PTSD. PTSD, sorry. This, they're all suffering PTSD in, in some ways, and they're all dealing with it in their own ways. Um, and it's showing all the different ways that humans deal with, uh, pain and 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 healing, uh, you know. Hulk, uh, he addressed his anger. He accepted, you know, he accepted the Bruce Hulk uh, combination. Uh, you know, Black Widow, she over, she was overachieving, as was Clint Barton. Although he was, you know, he was trying to drive out. You know, he's, he's trying to fix things in a way by killing all the evil and I don't know, creating balance in his own way. Um, you know, Tony's like, hey, I'm going to have a family. He basically just gave up. You know, it was just, it was just neat the way every one of those characters uh, was going through a um, was going through a story arc of their own of dealing with grief and pain. And I really liked the way they did that. And I thought, you know, that was it was good because, you know, it wasn't this like mono thing that had, well, we're all mad. It's like, no, they're all that we are our, all our own thing. And then there was Thor. <laughs> uh, that. Can I just say, uh, is, all right, is it me or was there just a itty bitty too much of uh, Thor being like that that sort of in, in, in that whole comedy relief kind of a thing? Like, I, I felt like it was it was fine. But after he talked to his mother, I felt like there should have been a mini redemption arc that sort of brought him back into a confident Thor. There uh, was. It did. He totally did. What you, were you so watching the same movie? He got movie? the hammer back. He was still worthy. And then when he was staring yeah. down Thanos, he dual right. wielded. He was badass as hell. Yeah, yeah. but then, then it ends. When Milner came back to yes. him. You know, like, it, it was a small moment, but he said, I'm still worthy. I'm know? still worthy, like, exactly. Yeah, like A lot of people I know missed that part. That was a big deal for him. You yeah. Know? After yeah. all he's been through, after all the failures, he was still worthy. Yeah. I just wanted him to get cut again. You know what I mean? I don't know. Dude, he will. He will. It's going to take time. And yeah. Guardian, and, and, I don't think and, you're going to see another fat Thor. Right. No, in my, Guardians my 3. Around, be in, yeah, in Guardians 3, he's going to be cut. Don't worry about it. No, Professor no. Hulk and Beer Belly Thor. There you go. <laughs> Incredible armor. <laughs> I loved it, dude. I loved, I loved Heavy Thor. I thought that was the greatest thing ever. I, it makes sense for his character arc. Yeah. I, all right, so so let me get your guys' opinion on this. There was, I, I saw somewhere online where somebody was, they were upset because they felt like uh, they were using Thor being fat as a butt in joke to like heavy people, and uh, I just did, I didn't get that at all. I did, I didn't get no. that feel. No. No. No, it's, no, like, no. it's like he, he was now the opposite of what he used to be. Yeah. You know? yeah. You know, I, I don't see the problem with that. No. And, and it was still else, Thor. Like, yeah, he's still Thor. If nothing else, honestly, it's like gentle ribbing between friends. Like, I'm sure all of us make fun of our friends all the time. Our yeah. friends make fun of us all the time. It, it's what sure. people who like each other do. <laughs> and, and, if, and if you notice, right, it didn't make him less of a person. I feel like if he had been like, oh, I discovered, you know, I'm back to being Thor again, and he became, you know, like thin and cut, and then he could kick ass, I think that would have been a slight. Because then it would, that, would, that would be kind of saying that only like, you know, only like a fifth Thor is worthy to do whatever it is that he's doing. You know what I mean? So, right. I don't know. I, I just didn't get that vibe at all. But I was reading 
reading about that online, and somebody was really, they were real butthurt about that. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, really? Uh, I don't know. Just a little over the top with the whole, you know, but overall, it, it, was, it didn't ruin anything. So I'll, I'll give yeah. you that. Uh, Walter Bryant says pudgy people need representation too. I love you, Walter. That is awesome. You're absolutely right. Hey, I'm, I represent pudgy. That's fine. <laughs> I, 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 um, I want to say, uh, let's talk real quick about some of the character arc developments over the 16 years of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You mean 11 years? Say, no. 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 Oh, it was twenty. It was it was more because you're forgetting in in there there was that plus five years. See what? Oh, so you're talking about the fictional universe, not our, not oh, our real time universe. Right. You got to specify that, Mike. Come on. I didn't think I had to. Once I said it, I thought I was talking people that were smart enough to know what I was saying. But oh, evidently oh. I. Didn't say that. All right. Okay, so um, I want to talk about the juxtaposition of Steve Rogers and I and um, Tony Stark, uh, whereas uh, Tony started out as a. Uh, sort of a self-centered guy who always had to have his own way, had a way out, had, was, would cheat when he could, and um, uh, who, as uh, Captain America said, you, you're not the type of guy who would lay down on the wire and All let right. the other guy win. And he went through that entire arc where he did do that. Uh, and I don't think he did it to spite <laughs> Captain America. I really think that was an earnest. Uh, and the other thing is I think we see a, sort of an, an inverse with uh, Captain America where he started out so straight-laced and by the book and non-compromising with his moral code, um, you know, like with his language, you know, and everything else. And, you know, n- you know and near the end he's like, you know, that is America's ass. And right, yeah. <laughs> first of all, he was a real person. He developed and he also realized at the end, like, you know what? I don't care if it's breaking the rules. I deserve to have a happy life. I've worked my ass off. And I think that that's sort of an important thing to point out. Like they kind of somewhere in the middle. And uh, I don't know time-wise that wouldn't it be in the middle, but would you say it's in Infinity War or not Infinity War? In um, Civil War when they crossed, when they sort of crossed and, and then went, started going the other way again? I'm not sure. That's, that's probably fair. Yeah. yeah. I'll say this though. Whatever Captain America does is the right decision. It is correct. I agree with that. I will second that. <laughs> I'm Team Cap all the way. Yeah, I'm Team Cap. Team Cap. Yeah, Team Cap. I, I, when Tony and I think I think it was uh, in, in Avengers One when he told uh, he told Cap everything special about you came out of a bottle. And uh, then he wields me on there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like so, yeah. nope. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, I have a really cool graphic I actually shared on Facebook where it's that conversation from the first Avengers on top where it's. Tony, or Cap telling Tony, you're not the guy laid on the wire below that. It's Tony snapping. And then next panel is uh, Tony telling Cap nothing special about you. Everything special about you can go on the bottle below that. It's, it's a picture of him looking me on the yeah, Perfect like, yeah. character arcs for both of them. I you was know, so, so pleased with how they wrapped that up. All right, so let's talk about that Mjolnir thing since we're on this uh, because there's, there's, like, there's like two things that are really important about that. All right, the first one is greatest fucking scene ever in a Marvel movie. Ever. I, uh, hands down. Hands Dude, down. like, I don't really get excited at movies where I'm just like, oh my god! Right? I don't really feel that, like, very often. And when I saw that, I was just like, <gasps> I was like almost speechless. I was like, oh, yes! I, I did Wait. not think we would get this on screen after Ragnarok. <laughs> and I was so incredibly pleasantly surprised when we got it. It and had I, to come now. It yeah. had to come now. And I'll, yeah. I'll tell Walter and Cedric, I said, before I see this movie, the one thing I want, there, there's a scene from Fear Itself where Cap lifts Mjolnir and has a shield and goes yep. Avengers assemble, assemble. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I, I'm praying so hard. I just want to see him with Mjolnir and say those words. And when it happened, almost died. Perfect. I almost died. I was like, <laughs> so yes. I'll say, so I, I didn't actually have that thought go into it because I just, it wasn't even on my radar that he'd be able to wield it anymore because it was destroyed. So my one thing, and I might have mentioned this on our the Mythwitch show beforehand, the one thing I wanted going into this movie was for Cap to say Avengers Assemble. Yeah, I remember and, that. Oh man, did I get it? Yeah, oh, dude, <laughs> like, it, like in the it, best possible way. Oh my god, it was incredible. Avengers, and then you let it hang there for a while in the theater. <laughs> yeah. Everyone was like, "Say it, say it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, so, and here's here's something else. So I was reading, I was reading an article by um, by the the producer. Is it the it's the Russo brothers, right? I, I keep yeah. 
Yeah, I'm getting this. They're, right. they're okay. the directors, the producers. Get the directors. It. Sorry. All right. So the yeah. So the Russo brothers, they said that when um, when Cap moved the hammer in uh, in in Age of Ultron, that he actually could have lifted it, and he knew it, and he didn't right. do it uh, for respect to Thor. He was he respected Thor, um, and it, they said that's that was always there. They they knew that at the time. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm down with that. Anyway, I'm glad that. Yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, you see Thor being like, "What?" An Age of Ultron yeah. a little bit, and yeah. that is why when he picks it up in Endgame, Thor is yeah. like, "I knew it, knew it," right. uh, which was also awesome. <laughs> that was, yes, yes, it was, yes, it was, man. And I, I, I just want to throw a shout out to my daughter. Uh, her favorite moment in uh, of all was when uh, Spider Man appears. Because she, you know, she's in love with the Spider Man, and she was like, <laughs> she grabbed my wife's arm. She's like, it's Spider Man, Spider Man. <laughs> so she was all Spider-Man happy. And Tony had some great moments on that. Yes, movies. yes, yeah. they did. Oh my god, yeah, that was that was part of the <clears throat> the dust that had kicked up from Thanos you know, <laughs> when he did all those. Like he was dusted, and I think some of that dust got my eye or something. Right. Right. Oh, Peter. Uh, this is a good time for me to bring this up. Uh, you were, uh, uh, and you have posted on our site before. You were a very very big uh, proponent of the uh, Ant Man Enema version of getting Thanos. Oh, you were, you oh yeah, yeah. And uh, I was I was uh, watching an interview with the writers, and they said that they would like to think of it as uh, l- look at uh, like how Thor. I mean, not Thor. About how uh, Thanos and the Hulk went head to head, right? Mm-hmm. I want you to imagine how tough uh, Thanos is, in the inside and the out. That it would more like being uh, instead of going up there and you know destroying Thanos, it would be more like uh, Ant Man being becoming a hemorrhoid. So that yeah. was that was their their wording on that. So I just want you to consider that. Okay, they, you know whatever you can say that. It's also a good time to bring up maybe that uh, that's the reason why the Russo brothers explain why Doctor Strange couldn't just cut Thanos' hand off with a portal. Like everyone was like, why didn't he do this? And like, well, his skin is really freaking tough, so there's no guarantee that would have worked. Right. right. Also, I want to even pursue that theory further. Even if he had cut his arm off, they still would have lost. Because honestly, like, I'll still take a one-armed Thanos against all of the Avengers that were on Titan and Infinity War. Even without the Infinity Gauntlet, I think he could still just one-on-one on, one on the whole. And then eventually, he'll kill all of them, and then just take the Time Stone, and then Tony's dead, so Endgame can't happen. A one-handed <laughs> Thor? I mean, I mean, a one-handed Thanos could take out all of them? Really? Without the Infinity Gauntlet? Do you huh. see that entire fight and where the, the moment when Thanos is like all of that for a drop of blood? Yeah, that's how tough that guy is. They don't well, have a chance against him. They I don't never know. He, did. I don't know. No, no. I, see, in in the first movie when, when Thanos is fighting them, you got to remember, he shows up with two stones. Yeah. Right? And he's, he, he's he already, one of them's the power. Any. But one of them's the power stone, which makes oh. you more powerful. Right? Yes. Only if he uses it. It's, it. it's not like a static effect. He has to actually activate the stone. So he I took out the Hulk. He took out the Hulk without any stones at all. I don't know. I don't know. I, I've never agreed with that. Because it, it, it just doesn't make Like, Thanos is strong, but Hulk is the strongest one there is. <laughs> so yep. I, I, I have to assume that he was using that stuff. I mean, it was right there. It was right in his hands, literally. I, I can't see him not yeah. using that. Yes, yeah, but all, the way they portrayed the use of stones throughout the movies was that Thanos had to clench his hand and the stones all glowed when he used them, and that never happened in the in the whole play. I don't know. I, I, I well, we won't know. There's no way for us to know. But I will say that did lead to one of the cool. That that was another really cool scene. So Cap Marvel was beating on Thanos, and she was really getting ahead. And I, that was just really badass the way he snatched the stone out of the glove and, and then knocked her out of the movie. Yeah. The fuck she, out! She was like, "I'm done." I'm I'm done. done. <laughs> she never came back. It's like, no, it. It bye. That was awesome. Yeah. That was like that was like some kind of like you know video game power punch thing. Like, so we'll on. <laughs> Bing. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking now, finger clock. Hey Pete, who's your least favorite Marvel Cinematic Universe character? Oh, Marvel. Okay, so it has to be Marvel Cinematic Universe. So it has to be in. All these yeah. movies and stuff. Uh, yeah, that's an easy answer for me. For, well, yeah. I have to say, now, are you saying main character or character at all? 
I, I, I'm saying like, you know, uh, in related to what we were just talking about. Oh, and yeah. All right, so, so to be fair, th this is currently right now is, is Captain Marvel. But I'll yeah. tell you, I haven't seen Captain Marvel the movie, so it's not fair for me to like really make a judgment. Um, no, you, you but, didn't really miss much. Right, but I will say this. When she was on screen, there's only there. I have to, I had to take back one statement I made because one of the statements I made was, "God, she sucked the life out of every fucking scene she was in." Like if she yeah, was she in a scene, it just was like a downer. I don't know why. Um, but there was a scene. I have to take it back. There was a scene that was actually very cute. When she looks at Peter, he's like, "I'm Peter Parker." Yes. She goes, "Hi, Peter Parker." That was actually really cute. And uh, that but was, you know. Between all of her appearances, between her own movie and this one, that was my favorite because she actually felt like a real person during that interaction, right. and that's been oh. really the only time she's felt like that to me. You know what's and funny? She's Mary Sue right now. That's why she, she's not interesting. Anymore. You know what's like funny? She, my wife. Her character my wife, potential, but right now, yeah. You know what's funny? My wife is sitting there next to me in the movie, right? And Captain Marvel shows up. My wife, she audibly goes, "Ugh." I was like, <laughs> "Oh my god!" <laughs> I was feeling it, but you know. I mean, like, I get that, you know, like, they're, they're trying to, you know, do more, you know, for the female audience. But, you know, Scarlet Witch is still alive, guys. And she, yeah. Like, she, and dude, and she, yeah. she put some work in that movie, all right? Yeah. She, dude, like, she was dude, badass. Was she was awesome. like, fire at everything. 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 Shoot everybody. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> dude I, felt, I felt a shudder when she was like, you took everything from me. And I was like, ooh. You know, that was bad. That was, that was really badass. Although, I have to say, Mantis... Like, why is she in this fight? She can't fight. Hey, guys, I will be right back. I got to okay. take care of something. That's fine. Mantis like, is in there because Mantis is hilarious. Well, at least she's better than Hawkeye. <laughs> oh, oh damn. <laughs> damn. Like, honestly, she's better than Hawkeye. Mantis does have power. She does. She does have power. She held Thanos off for a little bit, which yeah. is a lot. Yeah, no, no, but I mean, she was like in the fight, like the, like the, you know, when they had the the whole scene with all the girls lining up to fight, and she, you see her in the background, and she's like making a fist. I'm just like, girl, you're gonna get killed. Like, all right, you don't, you don't like. Let's segue for this comment I wanted to make. So, okay, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has a continuum, right? And you start off with the human level, uh, professional, non-powered characters, right? All yeah. guy, um, Natasha, and all them. And then you, you start moving into super serums and then like high powered and then you get into the highest levels like Carol Danvers, right? I do think that as of right now, Carol Danvers is a, a, a wee bit um, overpowered. Um, however, I think as we hit, and this is my anticipation, as we hit phase four, I think we're going to see a different side where she can just keep up with the Eternals and all the other types of uh, things that we have coming down the pike. And we're going to need her. I'm hoping we end up at least liking her more. I personally didn't have a problem with the Captain Marvel movie. Um, but uh, other than the fact that the whole thing about his eye getting scratched and they telescoped it, and I wish they just would not yeah, have put like it in the... Yeah. And I just could have seen it, and then be like, "Oh, that's kind of funny." I'm hoping, I'm hoping the way they deal with her being so powerful, because like, because in, in the comics she had binary for a while, and right. then lost binary, and then she's able to get it back temporarily by absorbing energy. So what I hope will happen is that when Rogue comes in, she's going to sap her of that yes. power, and then she'll be That'd regular be cool. Marvel, and yes. then eventually she'll be able to go Super Saiyan by absorbing energy for short periods of time. Yes. Right. Yeah, that would be really cool cuz that would that would keep a check in the character and make the character more enjoyable in a movie. Um, right. yeah, I was just going to say Mike, hey, don't worry. All they got to do is bring the X-Men in and Captain Marvel, <laughs> she's on her way out cuz yeah, someone's going to go, bro, "Hey, sugar." <laughs> <laughs> so I, I will say, you know, I didn't hate her movie. It wasn't the worst of the MCU. I think that unfortunately still goes to Thor the Dark World. Uh, <laughs> but she was like, she's still, like, a blame. She's a Barry Sue. Like, she didn't struggle at all, really, throughout her own movie. And that's that's really what lets you connect with a character. I mean, you don't even have to necessarily share any personal characteristics or anything similar with a character. Like, what makes you connect with a character is that they go through experiences and they struggle to get where they are and to win. Like, if they, if they don't struggle at all to win, it, it, there's no emotional investment in it. And, right. and I'll tell you, it's the same reason why I don't like Superman that much. I mean, there have been I some agree. good treatments of Superman, but like when it's Superman, like the ultimate, like super powerful Superman who can, you know, it's just pretty much, unless you have kryptonite, forget about it. 
I just don't care about him. I just don't right. care. Yeah. Okay. And you know, I, I know there's a, there, there was a lot of talk about you know like uh, people being sexist for not liking her. But here's the thing, though: when Captain Marvel showed up at Endgame, no one cared. But when Scarlet Witch dropped down in front of Thanos, the whole theater went, "Oh, awesome. yeah!" Like, yeah. yeah. Like, people was like, "Yes, here yeah. we go, rematch." Yeah. You know, so exactly. it, exactly. she did awesome. She had she made a great showing in that scene. Yeah. Pepper, I, yeah. Pepper was I awesome. Love so the, the part Pepper. where she and Tony are fighting back to back was great. That was amazing. Like, that's like perfect character building right there. Like, of course, those two would fight together. Dude, I yeah. love, uh, I love almost all the other female characters. Like, I, you know, yeah. I mean, Mantis is kind of like, meh, whatever. I mean, she's cute and all. <laughs> I like her. Like, she's a cute she, character she's and everything. Fine for what she's meant to be. Right. But like, you know, like Gamora is awesome. Gamora's great. Nebula, um, Nebula was a fantastic Nebula. character. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Can, can I say something about Nebula real quick? Okay, Go so. So I'm going to ruin Nebula for you. So when I'm watching it, Nebula, all I can see, I swear to you, all I can see is a cross between Napoleon Dynamite and um, like a goth chick. She's like a goth chick Napoleon Dynamite. She's always like, that's my father. Like she's always like. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I can't do that now. <laughs> yeah, so like, that was good. That was a good it, one. All right. So I have I have uh, a, a question. I want to I want to cover. I want to do a down the line question. Okay, uh, I'll handle this one. So Pete, we'll start yes, with sir. you. Uh, what were some of the things that you loved in in the movie? Just you know, uh, and if you and have any in mind that you want to pick, that's fine. Since you know whatever, if you can't think of anything. But no, uh, no, I got plenty. Oh, dude, I got plenty, and I'm gonna skip over the ones we already talked about. So I'm gonna skip over the Cap and the Thor and all that. Yeah. Um, I, so, so I'm a huge fan of Ant-Man. I love Ant-Man. I don't know why he's endured to me, you know, and I know a lot of people don't like their, he's not like their favorite character. I, I love, I fucking love Ant-Man and I love it when he, I love it when he becomes giant man. I just always like, he's like, ho, ho, ho. And he just like, that scene where he punches that flying thing out. I was like, My that, that, that was so awesome. What's that? My theater cheered at that scene. Yeah. Yeah, that that was so cool. I just I don't know. He's funny. Like like Paul Rudd is awesome, and he was a I great love cast the, for that character. Yeah, he's perfect. Like regular size man. <laughs> More like regular size man. Um, oh, the taco. So when his taco. Yeah, when his taco gets blown away, and he's just, he's like, he's like ah, right, <laughs> and then Hulk comes over and he just smiles at him, and it's like you know, it's like hey hey kid, you know, <laughs> it's a taco. It's so funny. That was awesome. I love that scene. Um, oh god. Uh, I, I would say those are those are two of uh, two the two that really stand out for me. All right, Cedric. What about you? Um, I, I loved Captain America getting redemption for the Hail Hydra line. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. And then him fighting himself because that was hilarious. Because he, when he, he's fighting each other, he knocks himself down. He's like, I can do this all day. I, I know. I'm you. <laughs> um, so I just love that. That was amazing. And then, of course, realizing that was America's ass. So yeah. <laughs> That's cool. All right, Dave. All right, so I got two moments. So remember when, he, when Cap was standing by himself against Thanos, and then all of a sudden in his ear, he is on your left, and all oh, yeah. the portals open up? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really didn't cry at that moment, <laughs> but uh, I was like, "Dang, Captain will fight that whole army on his own," which I believe he could have done. He, yeah. So, <laughs> but point, he was willing to do it as a point for him too. Right. And then the second best moment, which no one has mentioned yet, the real hero of this movie, the rat, rat. that hit the button that bought back <laughs> Ant Man. Without the rat, none right. of that would have happened. None of it. That's the hero yeah. we deserve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was Splinter, actually, from the Turtles. <laughs> I stole my mind. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, go ahead, Will. What about you? I mean, I, I have my two favorite moments, because and we've already talked about them, but they're just the greatest moments in the entire MCU is Cat Food and Meal on the Earth and Cat's Individual and Simple. I, I just, I mean, if I'm going to lay those aside, I, I, and maybe this is kind of a cop out answer, but just all of the callbacks to all of the previous movies. Mm. Like, and there are so many of them. Like, you might not, like, nor, as, as some of I've, I've heard people refer to them as normies, normies might not re pick up all of them, but I was sitting there like, holy crap, like all of these are like the the part where uh, Black Panther stands and, and gets the gauntlet from Clint. And he's like, hey, Clint, give it here. That's a callback to Civil War when he tells Clint that he doesn't care what his name is. It's like, wow, 
that's such like a perfect complete circle there. The part where Spider Man like activates insta kill. Yeah. <laughs> the part of the end after the funeral where uh Happy is sitting there with Tony's daughter and he's oh. like, Hey, what do you want to eat? And she's like, Cheeseburgers and that is a callback to the original Iron Man when he wanted yep. cheeseburgers the first he got back. And I am convinced, and no one was going to convince me of this otherwise, that John Prevost did not have to act out his emotion in that scene. Like, I think he legitimately but, probably choked up when he was acting then. Yeah. Because what a complete perfect circle. And I will. Yeah. You, you heard the sounds at the very, very end of the movie, right? Yeah. The, 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 the hammer on the forge. Yeah. <laughs> that, that part, I was going to be like, everyone was like, what? And I was like, dang. I yeah. remember. 2008, Iron Man was the first movie I ever saw more than once in theaters. So I heard that sound, I was like, oh, don't cry. You're a grown man, David. <laughs> and, <laughs> and can we say just how absolutely perfect him ending the line of I am Iron Man is? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. come on. Like, fun, holy fun crap. Fun you heard fun. the weight of what, that, of what being Iron Man meant by that point, you know? And the fact yeah. that he even has different inflections. So in Iron Man, he's like, I am Iron Man. But in this movie, he's like, and I am. And Iron Man. Yeah. Like, oh, oh. That is a pure inducing line. He realized he lost. He sat down. He's like, well, all right. That was good. (laughs) That was the last. I'm glad they did. They shot. I'm glad they did not give him an extra line at the end. They were doing editing. And they were in the editor. And uh, I was watching an interview. And it was just him. He When when Thanos said he's, he's inevitable. And and then he was gonna snap, and then he lost it, and then I, then he says, "I'm Iron Man." At first, it was just gonna be um, uh, Stark looking at him, and then snapping. And in the editing, the editor uh, said, "Wouldn't it be better if he said, I am Iron Man?'" They literally had to beg uh, him to come back and do that one shot." Yeah, because huh. they said they said that Tony would never let someone get the last quip on him. That's that's oh, very right. accurate. That's very right. Accurate. Oh, hey, dude. Right, let- Speaking of that scene, though, afterwards when, when he was dying, and remember earlier Pepper, you know, when he said he could just turn everything off and go to and go to bed, but she and she said, "But could you rest?" At the end, she said, "You yeah. can rest." Do- lost it. Yeah, yeah, I could. Yeah. I could. <laughs> I've definitely teared up at that line a couple times. Uh, Here's yeah. another behind the scenes. I found out that uh, that was uh, when they were going to make the last scene instead of him going into the Soul Stone universe or whatever and just like Thanos when he saw Gamora he was going to see an older version of his daughter and they decided it didn't work because oh yeah because they actually cast someone for that role too yeah, yeah. I can't remember who it was I yeah that, that wouldn't work I'm, I'm glad they didn't do that yeah no it, oh, what, the way they did it was they, they're flawless so there's one more funny thing I forgot Hulk in the stairs that was <laughs> fucking hilarious <laughs> Hulk hates <laughs> stairs. No more stairs. No more stairs. <laughs> yeah, no more stairs. So let me also like I didn't get a chance to say what I loved. Let me just do okay, my two things. Yep. And, we'll, and then I'd like to move on to what we hated. Uh, if, if if there's anything that stuck out that we haven't already said. Uh, first, I liked really. Uh, I forgot how much I really do love Rocket. Um, and he really in, just endeared himself to me. Um, him getting all his digs in on Stark, like when he said Stark, you know, you're only a genius here on Earth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you know, when he, <laughs> he was talking to your buddy Paul Rudd, Pete, he's like, you want to go to space? You want to go, <laughs> go to space, <laughs> puppy? <laughs> <laughs> it was like everyone treats him like a little pet. <laughs> I mm-hmm. think it was great that he – he spun it around like that. I just loved his overall um, awesome dialogue. I loved the uh, and you know call me a you know a sentimental guy who you know w- w- with his father and all that stuff. Uh, but I loved how you know, they were able to go back to 1970 to Camp Lehigh and he was able to have a conversation with his dad. Oh and yeah, it was a total payoff um, to a lot of stuff. So I really, yeah, I really appreciate that part too. I, speaking of that, I also love when uh, when Thor got a chance to talk to his mother. Yeah, I thought that was a yeah. really good scene too. Yeah, and you know, and like she could, she could, she she also knew she what was know. about to happen. Yeah. You know, as she said, she's like, I was raised by witches. You know, yeah. I know what's going on. Yeah, you know, right. I I love that a lot of people got a lot of closure. You know, yeah. like with you know with their parents and other and other people. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, same yep. here. So, all right, uh, real two quick things. Let me see. What did didn't I like? Um, uh, like I said, I, I just questioned where there are certain things that were a little too campy. And I mean, it's like Hulk doing the dab thing and the whole, you know, ah, you don't want to, think, uh, you know, oh, he's Ant-Man. They don't know Ant-Man. I, but 
it worked on some levels. And and, and again, I'm ask. I sometimes I have to put the question out there. But um, and the other thing I have to say is, you mean to tell me Tony fucking Stark in his dream home that he retires to on a lake doesn't have a goddamn dishwasher? He's hand washing the dishes. How would have he had have something that would just be like you know like uh, Jetsons and shit doing the dishes? No, but no, he. Well, yeah, okay. It's That's thing. Fine. This is like, very off the grid, though. Pretty much. He I know. he I, wanted to live. He wanted to live the simple life, man. He wanted he he wanted that. All that other stuff there? is is too tempting. You know, you start with the dishwasher with hands in it, and next thing you know, <laughs> right? Exactly. The next thing is ultra. <laughs> but you know what, I, I, Mike? I want to I want to talk to the, the campiness and the and the funny. I. Honestly, I think it's part of what makes the movie work so well. You have to. The movie was so somber and so yeah. down. There's so much. I mean, it's like everybody's dead and people are, you know, like half half society died. The earth itself is really falling apart. You know, people aren't, there's no, you notice there's no baseball games anymore. There's no, um, you, um, you know, people are, they're barely going to work. There's, everybody is suffering. Um, so I kind of think you need to cut it with that. I kind of think you needed the the goofy. I'll give you that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I like how it, it shifted its tone a lot to match the movies that they were going back to visit, which was really like I thought that was really well done. Like I, I heard someone early on complain about how the tone just wasn't consistent, but then like I talked to someone else and they're like, oh no, this was purposeful. Like they shifted the tone to match the environments of where they went, and it was great because it yeah. was just another ode to all of the previous events of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Right. Right. So we're, we're pretty good on time. I knew that we we, we weren't going to need a game because I knew we'd have a, a solid yeah, hour. Yeah. Um, Pete, um, I'll I'm gonna um, go through a couple things. Why don't you just look through the chat and make sure we can um, if there's anything anyone says. I've been we, watching we the chat. I've been watching the chat. It's mostly people just comment on the same things we're commenting on. Um, I, Mike, can I can I say something about the 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 gorilla the the I don't know what do you call it the the elephant in the, yeah, the elephant, elephant in the room. room the 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 time thing is not working for me. And I I know Hulk said that's not how it works, blah, 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 blah. But that's horse shit. Okay, look. Thanos was here, and he teleports to the future and dies. So he's not in this timeline anymore. If anything, he created a different timeline. Correct. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but there was a timeline break there. Something happened. Here's right. why it makes sense and it's okay. Because see, the Avengers and everyone's uh, un-understanding of time is what's going to bring the wrath of Kang the Conqueror. <laughs> you know what? They Jay Libby said that. Time. He said this is a setup for Kang the Conqueror. Yes. It, it They've broken about. time, and Kang is coming. <laughs> okay. Well, I just I, I didn't like how they did, uh, like, War Machines. Like, can we just go back and, you know, strangle baby? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and like, can't we just do that? Oh no, because it already happened. So this timeline wouldn't help. And blah 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 blah. But, and, but but then they were but then they were like, but you're not going to break the timeline. This is how you don't break it because it doesn't work that way. But but no, that is how it. That I'm sorry, right. but then that's how it works. But listen, listen I, well, look, really to, the, yeah, what? To be fair, the movie did not contradict itself. So they set out these rules. And they, they didn't go back on it. The only time you might say that it contradicted itself was when Cap showed up at the end as an old man. But also, he still had pimp particles, so he could have jumped back to their timeline somehow. And I can touch on that. I can touch on that, too, because that is a director's versus writer's uh, right. You know, right there. But uh, I, I actually verbatim copied this down today as I was <clears throat> um, in China watching the movie. So... Uh, <laughs> Ch and first he said, changing the past doesn't change the future. Right. If you travel to the past, the past becomes your future. I, I understand that. Yep. Your former present becomes the past, which can't now be changed by now your new future. Right. No, Mike, I get that. And that's the part I was de -de 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 -de. That's bullshit. Because and Thanos Thanos still fucking disappears from the timeline, so he can't do the things that he did. Right. That can't yeah, happen now. Right. right. So so you you have to pair that with the Ancient Woods uh explanation of, of timeline breaks. So this movie created multiple different hunts. So like when Loki steals the Tesseract, that creates yeah. an alternate timeline. Yes. When Thanos jumps to the future, that creates an alternate timeline. Exactly. No, I'm, I'm saying they created different timelines. They are in a different... Right, but they, that's they, not they... contradictory in the movie itself. No, no, like, no, no. No, I'm, no, no, I'm saying, but what Hulk said, it, it's hard to explain what I'm, what I'm trying to say here. They 
did veer off. So there is a timeline where Thanos has still won, right? They've only changed their perspective. They've yeah. made a different timeline better for themselves. But there is still a timeline that exists with them that they didn't win and they didn't get to go back. Right. But, uh, yes. but I have, well, I'm I've actually got, convinced that there is. There is. No, there is. There has to be. So, well, well. so hear me out. So there's this prime timeline, right, that we're dealing with here. The ancient one explains that there's only a break of an ultimate timeline if they go back and, and something isn't right. So okay. we mentioned Loki doing that. So the only – there's not really a timeline break that would have happened where Thanos would have won because the only ultimate timeline that was created with Thanos that was different was when he hopped to the future. So that timeline just doesn't have Thanos. Okay. <laughs> The problem is, is that how did Thanos snap if he didn't make it to make the first snap? Well, I, I think it's using another show like Doctor Who to explain it. It's a fixed point. The snap happened regardless of uh, when once the snap happened. All these other timelines and all these okay. other universes happened. Right, fair enough. Right, let's do this. What if I go back in time now, I use the pen particles, and I go back in time between the time that... Thanos snaps, right? And the time that he dies, where is he? See, where is he? He's not there. So what do you mean? So if you Thanos, go to the he's there. if Thanos went to the future, right? right, right. He's no longer here because he went well, to he the future. Went to the future after the snap. So that's what I'm, like the fixed point. Oh no, 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 no! They went back. He, he came to the future from the past. Yeah. So where is right, he so after that? You, you right, so there is fractured Thanos. timelines. There is one timeline right. where they did not fix it, and there's a timeline where they did. Well, in the timeline where they didn't fix it, they didn't have to because it never happened. This is why we need Kang. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. so, so in the prime timeline, what happens is a 2014 Thanos comes to the future. So so we'll call we'll call the prime timeline timeline A, right? The Thanos that, we, that they killed at the end of Endgame is the Thanos from timeline B, which never assembles the gauntlet to snap. So that timeline B never even saw a snap. Anymore. Right. Yes. Right. And Gamora lives. Be, lives timeline like, B Gamora is now alive in timeline A. Right. <laughs> it's still, uh, there's still, an, no, that still doesn't work. Thing. Here's a weird thing on a smaller scale though, that made me that this will probably break your brain even more. If I go back in time, let's say you and I are in the room together, right? Uh, and I go back in time, and I before you put your shoes on, I steal your shoes, and I come back. You're still going to have your shoes on, but there's another timeline where you don't have your shoes, and you that's can't what find I'm them. Saying. But, no, th that's what right. I'm saying. Right? There's two different times. It's fine, but it's fine because I have a solution. I, I actually have a solution. Okay. Just like when you go the speed of light, you know, time is relative, right? Or you get, you know, you get close to the speed of light time, or you get close to a gravity well. Time is relative. Dimension. Alternate dimensions are relative. It doesn't matter the other dimensions. They don't matter because the stories that the, the MCU movies are occurring in, it's relative. It's our dimension. It will always right. be our dimension because that's where our movies exist. So that is the one we're following. So no matter what happens with any other timeline, this right. one's ours. And so right. the disregard of the other timelines is what will incur the wrath of Kane. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair. Right. No, this fair. Might also come in, this might also come in to Spider-Man Far From Who. Yeah, yeah I thought it could. I was watching that, I'm like, wait a minute. You guys just created other timelines and you really don't care what... No. Kang, is, Kang is coming for you. <laughs> He's coming. <laughs> and, and there's another thing. I was I was looking in an interview and this, there's a slight dissonance, uh, not dissonance, dis... dis maybe dissonance, but uh, disagreement between the writers and um, the Russo brothers, which says that one sets, one camp says that the, uh, the only time you actually have a branching timeline is when one of the stones was removed or was involved in changing that timeline. Um, and otherwise there's a, it's a different, you, you title it differently. And unfortunately my brain kind of breaks, but the, someone else was explaining it to me and saying it, much like when you're dealing with the quantum realm, you're dealing with uh, basically, if you th think about it, like Schrodinger's Loki. Loki is now in a universe where he has the time stone. Yeah. Uh, and he's in other universes where he doesn't. 
right. and he can exist and have an entire branching timeline where all these adventures right. are going to happen on Disney. But, um, but ultimately, Boston. what happens is you, if you fuck with time, you go back and you do time travel. You create other timelines. That's just that's yeah, right. pe period. I mean, just, that's it. Now just now that believes Captain America is Hydra. Yes. Right. Yeah. And, and there's Secret Empire is a thing now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Right, and it's it's fine. It, I'm totally fine with that. Just don't say that's not what you're doing because that that's that's exactly what happened, and it's fine. It's good. It's all good. And yeah, and Loki. Loki so wait a minute. So, so what happened? So Loki picked up the he picks up the tesseract, right, and he right disappears, yeah. right. So right then and there, he created an alternate timeline. Yep. Yes. So I wonder what they're gonna do with that. Like, Bring oh, Disney Park. So, <laughs> It, it seems like it'll be the focus of the Disney Plus Loki show. Yeah, it's already set. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But is it going to be Tom Hiddleston? Is he going to be? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yep. oh. Yeah. so he signed yeah, all, up for all it. the Disney Plus shows. They're reprising their their MCU actors. So they, we've got Falcon and Winter Soldier, which are Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan. We've got Wanda and Vision, which is Paul Bettany and the uh, and uh, Elizabeth Olsen. Uh, there's a What If series that's apparently going to be animated. I don't know if that'll be MCU related or comics related. Uh, there's the Loki show with Tom Hiddleston. And yeah. there's the supposed Loki to be a show. Hawkeye show with with uh, Jerry Renner. The Loki show. I can say it now. Dun 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 dun. It's the Loki <laughs> show. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Even if it was called that, that would be great. The Loki. That show. would be. Right. Right. I, I now, I, I have I have a question for you guys. So when when Captain Marvel shows up, and and uh, War Machine had a pretty good point. He said everyone in this room is about that superhero life. Where were you? Like, did you guys buy her her explanation? Like, yeah. your planet has been getting screwed for like ten years. Where were you? One, that was Fury. Fury never called her. And two, the Cree are out there. She's dealing with the Cree. Yeah. So that's yeah. by herself. Uh, yeah. I, I gave her I a pass on that. Thanos. Well, yeah, me too. <laughs> so <laughs> she she should come help with Thanos. <laughs> How did she find Tony? By the way, how did she find Tony in the vastness of space? Anybody know? Uh, she's a Mary Sue and can do everything. Plot. Oh, yeah. God. No, no. I'm saying, is, has anyone written, like, any excuse for that? Like, no, I'm, That's a good question. No. Like, uh, they, they needed it to happen in five minutes, so they made it happen with the okay. Mary character. All right. I it, mean, it, honestly, it, if, you take, if you take all of Captain Marvel scenes, if you take all of Captain Marvel scenes and just put Thor in them instead, he can do everything she can do, but essentially, like, he can blow up spaceships he did in the Infinity War. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, Michael Thompson has a good. I love his this comment. He said because it's a DC crossover thing. He said, "Shouldn't the Black Flash entity come out of the Speed Force and destroy <laughs> destroy the time travelers?" Oh, <laughs> and the answer to that is yes. Yeah, Marvel versus DC. <laughs> kind of be great. Then essentially, the DC movies were better enough to do that. Wouldn't that be Kang the Conqueror? Soon, soon. Kang the Conqueror is Black Flash, right? Is that is that what you're saying? <laughs> Possibly. I, now you got me having to do some study up on um, Kang the Conqueror because I don't know a lot of his backstory. Oh, he's oh it's about. it's long. There's yeah. you got a lot of is there's a there whole, are a lot of different Kangs also. Yeah, like, there's yeah. multiple Kangs. There's if if, you, if anyone I would like to just take this moment uh, and plug uh, someone who deserves a plug. Comics explained. This guy uh, is a great great thing. If you just want to know, you just type go into his little YouTube page of Kang the Conqueror. Bloop. He's got a couple of things. You want to run through this storyline, this storyline, this universe, and zip, zap, zap in about an hour or so, you'll be an expert on Kang the Conqueror. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hey, so we're coming up. We're coming up on an hour. Let's, Mike. What are we? What are we going to squeeze in before we? Uh, before we uh, bag uh, let's, out. Let's see. Um. Well. Um. I don't know. I have. I have. Yeah, well, let's see. We we asked a bunch of questions. Let me. I got a couple more questions here. Uh, twenty fourteen. Oh, you already asked that one, Pete. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Thanos is glaive, right? The double sided double uh thing glaive. Uh, I don't think that thing uh works on a physical <laughs> scale here, right? The it's got teeth on both sides, yeah. and it's double ended. So there's there's yeah. Of my head cannon, my head cannon is that he took it off the Thanos copter, and he <laughs> uses it as a weapon. That's my head cannon, and I'm sticking to it. I, I agree. I like it. Next question. Uh, it's cool looking, and because it has two blades, of course, it can spin and come back to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
it, it, it works on the same principle as uh, Captain America's shield. It, yeah, it yeah. just works. It's all their it's all their weapons. I like the fact that it tore up Captain America's shield. It's like, man, that is made out of some badass space stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> right, and and it, it, it can withstand vibranium. So it does like So yeah. I guess Black Panther was lucky he didn't take a hit from that thing because yeah, he would have cut him in two. Died again. <laughs> right. Oh man. Let's see. We already just we already talked about uh, the the Tesseract and uh, Loki. Um, so yeah, the question is, did, yeah, did he, did Cap use, cause a branch timeline when he went back in time or not? And that was something that I was watch listening to in an interview and the writers say, no, the writers say in their minds and in their canon that, and like, like Cedric said, in their head canon, um, <laughs> that, uh, he, when he was visiting her and she said, oh no, I have two children. And do I want to know about the guy? That those were his kids. And he wouldn't have known it yet, but you know because of the whole time line. So like maybe you know? he went back in time and told her, "Hey, look, I've come back in time. You can't, we can't, you can't right. talk about me. I'm, I don't really, I'm not and really if, here. I'm here, but I'm not here." Yes, and when you start doing that, then you go, "How can Cap sit there and let all the shit happen throughout history without being able to do something?" And that, <laughs> maybe that he did. Own- yeah. Maybe, maybe he took on a different persona. And yeah. fought without a shield or anything like that, and with some yeah. other superhero that uh, will get mentioned at some point. Good. But uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, I was gonna say while we're, we're sort of on the topic of uh, what we, I was gonna ask everyone, um, what do you guys like to watch on YouTube um, in general for like wh- who's your go-to clearinghouse for movie and TV breakdowns and predictions? Um, I'll I'll go first. I'd say I like new rock stars. I love Eric Voss. And um, the Mr. Sunday movies is pretty funny. I just I don't know why I get a kick out of hearing this guy his um his uh, Australian accent, mate, and uh, he, he's pretty funny. So those two are kind of what I usually go to. There's some other things here and there, but uh, Cedric, do you have a go to? Um, well, for uh, explanations, um, Screen Junkies have a lot of good stuff. Um, I also really like right Wisecracked, like they do the philosophy behind stuff and kind of like why things didn't work. Okay. Uh, so those are two I go to a lot. David, um, I actually watch a lot of Comics Explained. Uh, his his long format works for my long drive, so it's perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, Emergency Awesome is pretty good, and then yeah. I also go to um, uh, Film Theory. Uh, his, his movies, uh, his, his episodes are pretty good. You know, when he, when he theorizes about like the different parts of the MCU and whatnot, so. <laughs> Is that the thing where he the the guy goes you know uh, ten or twenty reasons why this wouldn't work or the that no no it's, it's another guy he also does uh, game theory he's he's another guy oh okay yeah film theory all right Peter do you have anything you know I don't I don't go to anything in particular I just like see stuff on YouTube and click on it like you know it says it'll it'll have some explanation under it you know somebody's show or whatever so i watched stuff all across the board and um you know i'll I'll just watch all different kinds of theories you know i wind up in some dark places with some of these though like there you know there are you know like i said you know i'm not a big fan of captain marvel but i don't hate on her i don't care or whatever i just don't think she's a great character but you know maybe she'll change my mind when i see the movie i don't know Maybe, maybe she'll grow on me through future movies or whatever i don't know i don't have a particular hate against her but god damn there are people that do holy shit and like <laughs> some of these people are dicks i don't like captain marvel that they, uh, the way they've done it so far but that makes me mad because I, I actually like captain Mar- or miss marvel from the mm-hmm. comics yeah, um, when she was Miss Marvel, she was a lot better. I was, I was iffy. Like I understood the reasoning behind her taking the Captain Marvel name, but her character kind of took a dive. But what yeah. me is that if she doesn't do well, one of my favorite characters is Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel. And I feel yeah. like if Carol Danvers can't pull it off, then we won't get Kamala. So right, okay. I want her to do better. <laughs> right, right. But again, I understand that just that's just some some videos. Like when you watch videos at random, you 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 get random. You know? yeah. It's like oh. What about you, Will? You have any go-to uh, film theory? Oh, uh, uh, so the, my probably my two favorite film critics on YouTube. One, Brother Media. Everyone's probably heard of them. They're they're real good. They're real good at sitting down just analyzing videos and stuff like that. Uh, another of my favorite YouTubers is this guy called Mauler. So like Darth Maul, but Mauler. Um, he does really long videos, so he actually might be great for you to listen to, David. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he did. Uh, so he does both like 
more emotional type videos where he says like unbridled rage or unbridled praise or whatever. Um, he actually did not like Captain Marvel or Black Panther, but loved Infinity War. And he was, you know, good on. He was kind of split on Endgame. Um, but he did to put give you an example. Uh, he did three movies on the Last Jedi. He ripped it apart. Couldn't stand that movie. Uh, and they were all an hour and a half long. Close. <laughs> What's that? that? That's guy who tells his videos. Black Panther and Unbridled Rage, right? Like what you're yep, saying. That's him. Yep. I saw his last Jedi videos. <laughs> yeah. seen- they're they're great. So he does great work, and he, all he does he does he basically just addresses the writing as his primary focus. So he just tries to analyze uh, objectively analyze movies, which is great. Um, and and just be like this is why this is bad writing. This is why this is bad writing. This is why this is bad writing. And uh, I I just like he's actually part of a crew called BFAP, which is uh, Every Frame of Pause, which also does like five six hour podcasts, but. Uh, I just put it on up at work while I'm working and just listen to it and type away. So uh, I I recommend, especially given any of Muller's videos, a, a, a visit or Red Letter Media. They're always great. Red Letter Media is the best, dude. Yeah, they're they're incredible. Hmm. Like I didn't realize why I didn't like the first three movies, like the like, you know, episode one, two, and three. And I watched Red Letter Media. I'm like, holy fuck, this guy's totally right. Like, yeah. like, oh, yeah, no, they're, they're great. So I, I love them for a lot of the same reasons why I like Muller, because they're very analytical and they just try to approach it objectively. Like he said, what was it? One of the things he said was, if can you just, you have to be able to describe a character without saying what they look like or what their job is. And if you can't mm-hmm. do that, the character's flat. It's not a, it's not a three dimensional character. And That's a really good way to put it. You could What's that? Scott, describe Captain Marvel. Well, I haven't seen I haven't seen her movie, so I don't know enough about her. But um, I saw yeah. it, and I can't tell you anything about her. Yeah, I'm not sure if I could do that. <laughs> right, she's flat, and she's no. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> Des- describe Thor. Well, he's kind of chunky. No, no. <laughs> he has a hammer. Right, he has a hammer. Um, all right, so hey, guess what? It's ten o'clock. Uh, I think we did all right. I mean, you know. Uh, it, it, last comments, anyone, real quick. Uh, last thing, anything you feel like you're burning desire, you have to get off the chest about the movie. Uh, I just got a second what David said earlier in the movie, and I think you put it perfectly. Like this is just a once in a lifetime movie experience. We are never going to see, at least in our lifetime, we are never going to see a cinematic experience like this again. And no, it was probably not so incredibly I, satisfying. That's what I said. It was the double knot. <laughs> <laughs> I just said that. <laughs> no, it, was, it was awesome, though. It, it, was, it was. Awesome. All right. Well, Peter. Uh, take a all set. right. So, yeah, so two things. So, I um, I can't wait for Spider Man Far From Home. I really, I'm, I'm like, I'm chomping yeah. at the bit to I'm see that. I, for that. I love this. Great past mystery is a good character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I want to see what they do with him because. Mysterio's supposed to be a bad guy. Like, oh, yep. it's going to be a they're twist. Trying to, they're trying to insist that, oh, no, he is actually Spider-Man's ally. It's like, dude, you're no, not fooling No, he's like, not. No, on. he's a bad guy. Come on. Someone likened, Come on. It, someone likened it to when the Star Trek guys tried to be in the second new movie with, with Benedict Cumberbatch, and they're like, no, he's not con. And then he was totally con. Then he's totally like, con, right. Right. Look at you, J.J. Abrams. It's like, you know, it's like, it's not, pur- Lost is not purgatory. Eh, it's totally purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that, and uh, that's 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 my last word. All right, everybody, ready to go? Let's uh, thanks thanks. Oh wait, oh, no, we gotta give out links. So Will, Will, you write books and stuff, right? What do you would give us give us a link to where we can find like a book or two that you may have written? Uh, so if you go to my Facebook page, it should be Will Conway Literature. Uh, there should be a link to Amazon to pick up my books from there. I usually write high fantasy type stuff. I've actually worked with. David and Cedric on a couple of things and release some stuff through Offshoot. Yep. Okay. And then David and Cedric. Yes. Uh, please check out our book Oddwell. It's available now in Barnes and Noble, um, through Diamond, literally, literally anywhere you can find comics, you should be able to find Oddwell. Yeah. Uh, oh, follow oh us uh, at the Frog of War uh, on basically everything. Yeah. Ooh, wait, you have it? Yeah. yeah! Nice. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Let me hold up, Mike. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, there it is. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. We actually did, got to do a little signing at Barnes & Noble. Yes. Totally didn't cry when that happened. <laughs> um, but, that, yeah. That's well, awesome. Barnes & Noble, you weren't there. What, 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 what happened? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then also follow us at Grid Breakers. 
Um, this SBI, uh, Starburns, has asked us to add more stuff to it, so they pushed back our date. We're making them do the announcement next time. Um, okay. <laughs> but that, it's, coming out, it's coming out very soon. Our part is done. We're just waiting on some of the finer points to be finished. Uh, but yeah, follow us at, at Gridbreakers TCG. Uh, we're more active on on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Uh, Twitter is a hellscape that we don't want to venture into. It's scary. So I don't like Twitter. <laughs> don't like it. Uh, yeah, I, I have a Twitter. I never log on to it. <laughs> yeah, I hate it. Did hate we it. put that Kickstarter up on our YouTube page? You did. Yeah. Your videos yeah. on the page. So yeah, thank yes. you for that. Uh, okay. so, the date is going to it'll be changing, obviously. Yeah. Uh, right. uh, go to Mythwits on YouTube if you would like to learn more about Gridbreakers because we did a whole thing on it, and you, now you'll you'll have sort of a, a pre-game <laughs> um, understanding of what uh, what it's going to be all about. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. And as, as for us, next week, because we barely do this, we need to do this more, Mike. Next week, we're doing the same thing that we just did tonight, but we're doing it with Game of Thrones. Thrones. So Ooh, if you yeah. if you haven't seen the last episode, I have opinions on that, and they are not yeah. like my opinions on this game. <laughs> I seen it. No, so, not not too many people in that camp. Will not too many people. <laughs> there's a I've seen memes on people like like uh, there was a picture of um, it had Arya and she's holding this guy's head up and got the knife to his throat. The one guy that she slit his throat and it said. Uh, it's, it's something like HBO people canceling their subscriptions. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. <laughs> so anyway, so we're going to be doing that next week. And uh, just so you all know, in uh, it was going to be June, but now it's going to be July second. Uh, keep an eye out because this guy is going to have something to pimp. I'm uh, I'm going to be launching my Kickstarter for Cube of Death. Nice. Looking sweet. All looking right. sweet. Yes, sir. So, anyway, that's all we have for tonight. So, here we go. All right, everybody, you have just enjoyed another awesome episode of The Mythwits. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. And make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread Mythwits love over the entire planet. And hey, if you check out the podcast, you actually get the movie draft wrap up at the end of every episode. So, stick around for that. It's like an end credit scene. Um, <laughs> from Marvel. Um, tweet us at Mythwits and check out Mythwits.com. Mythwits is produced by Aether Forge Creations as part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPS, TSRPN.com and AetherForge.com for more cool stuff. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it, don't change it, and don't post it on social media because it's going to be a tearjerker. Thanks everybody for listening. Tell your friends to tune in and we will see you all next Monday. Mike... Yo, man, I'm a little scared that he said Can the Conquer is coming. <laughs> and stay tuned for the Movie Draft Minute.